Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. It's winter here and it's a perfect time of year to get around to the gardens to see what needs to be done. In today's video, we're going to have a look around the kitchen garden and see what's happening, do a lime harvest and finally do a third renovation of a former raspberry patch and turn it into a strawberry growing space. So first up in the kitchen garden, let's check out the herbs. Here I've got the beautiful pineapple sage, which is still in flower. It's been flowering for months and months and the bees and birds are still enjoying that. And it's just the most delicious scent. You can use that in cordials or in teas. And uh, it's just a beautiful plant to have around. I'll be trying to spread that around the swales because it's so good. And right next to me is the beautiful rosemary that's fully in bloom at the moment with the bees enjoying a bit of a winter feast on that. I've got various uh, parsley's and chives in this area and also this wonderful lemon thyme which is really healthy and it's got a beautiful scent as well. And just behind me here, I've got my oregano, my lemon balm, and a huge patch of chervil, which is just volunteered everywhere. I've got quite a few parsley volunteers in this area, alongside my Vietnamese mint. The fact that I've still got Vietnamese mint really shows what a mild winter we've had. Usually it's been so cold that this has just been wiped out and then it regrows again from um, the roots each season. And I think the mild winter has contributed to the problem I've got with these cleavers which have taken over this space. While I do have some Swiss chard growing here, a lot has been struggling to get through all these cleavers and I've had to keep pulling this out and use it as a mulch to get some of these plants going. Most winters I've got no problem getting my winter greens from this area. So to turn this problem into a solution you just need to mulch the plants you've got with the cleavers and give just a little bit of support for these plants to get them growing well. Along with these little Swiss chard seedlings, I do have the borage coming through, which always has a beautiful display of the purple flowers come spring. Just near my bay tree, I've got some echiums that are just starting to really get going. I propagated them just from a cutting from a friend and they should be flowering beautifully this spring. Just on the edge of my kitchen garden is a second rosemary plant, which is very vigorous. And I think I might have to really chop this back. Just below it here, hiding in amongst some grasses, are some beautiful Pacific irises, which really give a lovely display come spring. So I'm going to have to use some of this as chop and drop and support those plants a little bit better. And on the other side of this rosemary, there's plenty of grasses that I need to control as well as some of my boysenberry, which is starting to spread a bit too far and wide. And it's really important to keep that plant under control. My lemon tree has produced an abundance this season, I think thanks to Magic Elixir, which one of my viewers, Ruby, recommended that I use on my citrus. It's just urine diluted one in ten with water and used to water the plants and it's produced an abundance so much so that I will have to be doing some big prunes on some of these branches because this plant is just getting weighed down. I will have to remove some of these huge big lemons that I haven't sort of caught up with at this point. I do need to take some of the weight out of these branches because with uh, big winds you can have the branches snapping off. And it's also good to get in and just reduce the height a little bit so it makes lemon harvesting a whole heap easier. With this many lemons down low, there's no point having your plants too high. I've got quite a few rhubarb plants in my kitchen garden. They're all looking pretty spectacular. I just love the colours of the, the greens and the vibrant reds in the garden. Now, just next to this rhubarb plant, I had planted a passion fruit, but it's looking like it's struggling. I think it's been gnawed down by insects and hasn't quite taken off. So I might have to try another plant, but I won't do anything at this point. I'll just check out if it comes back in spring. A 
couple of other plants that I'm hoping to train up and over this trellis here are some kiwi plants. This one here is the female and just behind me is the male plant. The male has reached the top and I'm hoping the female will do the same come spring when it kicks into life again. In the middle of the kitchen garden now, I've got a very overgrown area, which I will be working on. Not today, but I'm putting it on the list. Just here is a mandarin tree, which I've been harvesting plenty of mandarins from. Now I'm not sure with the mandarin whether I will clear the middle out and uh, open it up a little bit, but that's something to think about and perhaps research. For the moment, I'll just leave it because it is producing really nicely. Just behind me here is the lemon myrtle, which is getting a bit bigger each year. It is a bit frost um, sensitive, so it's been very happy that we haven't had too many frosts so far this winter. And that's a beautiful plant to harvest from and uh, use for teas. Over the back here is the boysenberry, which I do need to chop back a little bit. I also need to fix up its trellising because it's kind of pulled that down a little bit. And I do need to check out where some of these um, vines are running to because I really don't want it spreading far from this spot right here. I have been out and pruned my two or three apple trees in the kitchen garden. This one is my John of Gold and it really produced beautifully uh, this last season. So it'll be interesting to see if we get plenty of apples from it again. And right here is a red currant, which is looking fairly angled. I'm trying to prune on this side of it and kind of get it to, to go up straight, but I don't know if this is just their normal habit or not. But again, it was really productive last season with the beautiful bright um, red currants. Making my way over to the blueberries now, we've got my blueberry variety that I don't know the name of that has got big fat blueberries in um, the growing season. And I have attempted to propagate um, some more of this because I would love to spread this plant around. This is the variety that loses its leaves, whereas this other variety hangs on to its leaves mostly in my winter and is already producing uh, little flower buds so that it's ready to break into flower come spring. In fact, some of them are already about to burst into flower right now. On the other side of my blueberries, I've got my raspberries which have snuck around there and I've harvested quite a lot during last autumn. I'm just moving through past an area that really needs controlling. I've got my orange tree, which kicked into life with a little bit of uh, magic elixir. And I'm sure it will just keep growing. Maybe a bit more magic elixir is required here. My black currant bush is becoming huge and I probably have to thin it a little bit more than I have and propagate a whole heap more of these beautiful plants. You can see it's all starting to, to bud up nicely and it'll be productive just like it was last season. And that leads me on to my other apple tree or trees. I've got a tree that's grown from seed that's um, just next to this main apple tree. It is a, actually this one's my John of Gold and the other one's my Crips Pink. Last season I didn't get any apples off this little tree, but there's lots of buds, so there's plenty of flowers coming this season. So I'm hopeful that we'll get some more apples because they were just delicious. And as for the little tree, that's got lots of buds on it too. I was going to dig that one up and move it, but I might just leave it another season, see if we can get an apple from it and taste it and see if it's worth leaving as is or whether it'd be worth grafting onto. Now just in amongst all my rhubarb plants, I do have the remains of what was once a thriving strawberry patch. And I do have some small plants in here still, but with the apple tree getting bigger and these uh, rhubarbs really taking over the space, it's pushing the strawberries out. So because I love strawberries, what I'm going to do is dig up quite a lot of these little plants and then recreate a strawberry patch over where my former raspberry patch was. 
The raspberries kind of failed to grow there, but I'm sure given the adequate light over there, the strawberries will be very happy with their move. And it will also give me a chance to start moving on some of this dreadful boysenberry vine. But before I go and create a new strawberry patch, I'm going to harvest some of these limes. This lime tree has been, like the lemon tree, really productive and the limes are starting to ripen and they're at the most juiciest when they're going yellow like this. So today I'm going to grab lots of these yellowing uh, lemons and juice them and freeze the juice. I have been preserving um, by slicing them up and freezing and I also just throw in whole limes as well into the freezer when I'm running out of, of time. But today I'm going to juice them and then freeze them in ice cube trays. Now I have trimmed this tree a little bit just to keep the height down just to make sure that going forward it's really easy to harvest from. I think that'll be enough to juice and get into the freezer. With the limes harvested, it's time to get onto our strawberry garden bed. Right here, I have had raspberries growing since I started this garden, but they haven't been successful. They've actually moved around my little pond and currently they're over with my blueberries. I have started other raspberry patches up in my swale as well, and I'm giving up on raspberries in this space because they don't seem to want to grow here. So instead, I think the strawberries will do really well. Now the last time I attempted to clear up this space, I was interrupted by a snake, a copperhead that appeared in my pond, which put me right off. And I haven't been back to this area since. The grasses were up here. So the other day I just trimmed them down when I was trimming the lawn and I've left all of that on the surface. Now to prepare this for our strawberry bed, all I'm gonna do is lay some cardboard down and then put on a pile of wood chip. Wood chip and cardboard was all I did to get the rest of the garden established. So it's gonna work well here. And I'll plant the strawberries just into a compost pile within the wood chip layer. I've got the area for my strawberry patch all covered in cardboard. It is overlapping and it's quite thick cardboard. I will still have grassy issues at the edge here, but I don't know if I can do much about that at this point. I'll just try and pile that up with the wood chips as much as I can. But for the most part, the strawberries should grow in here without getting inundated by all those grassy weeds. Now just to start piling it up with these wood chips. two piles of wood chips at the moment. One fairly fresh and this second one here is quite aged. So I'm choosing the aged one for this purpose because I want it to start to break down fairly quickly and it's already started the decomposition process. There's lots of fungal activity in it. So the fact that we're just going to be planting our strawberries into compost into this wood chip layer I think uh, selecting this pile would be best. But if you are wanting to do something similar and you only have fresh wood chips, use that. That's all I used at the start and it still worked beautifully. Great, now we can get on with the fun part. And the fun part of course is the planting. Now I've been and dug up some of the strawberry plants from just behind me here, but also some from my front garden. And I'm just gonna dot these around. 
and bury them into piles of compost within the wood chips. So I'll just spread around what I've got. I'll dump it all out. And we'll evenly spread them. Okay. I can always grab some more plants uh, down the track if I don't think it's uh, spreading out enough. But I think this will do nicely. So all I'm going to do is just make a little divot in the, the wood chip. Fill that with some of this mushroom compost. And get the, the roots buried into that. and I'll get the rest in. It's okay to go straight down to the cardboard. That will break down over time. And just get of those roots covered in there. I'm just going to push the, the wood chips just over the compost a little bit just to cover it up, just to help stop it drying out. With plenty of light in this spot, once these little plants find their roots, they will just take over this whole space and hopefully come spring and summer we'll have a, a bountiful crop of strawberries. There's still a bit to do in the garden, but it's great to have made a start with the strawberry patch. If you'd like to see how I designed and created the garden, then watch this video next. <music> <music>